Today on The Breakfast, Nigerians react to 70,000 results uploaded on the IREV Beavers reconfiguration to be completed on Tuesday. Also on The Breakfast, effects of the Inara scarcity bite had as Nigerians go through untold hardship. What is the way forward? And would also be reviewing all of the biggest stories making the headlines on our national dailies. Welcome to The Breakfast. It's beautiful Monday morning and thank you so much for being with us. I am Messi Ebopo. Uh, as always, we set up a conversation with Top Trending. The lineup is very interesting and we ask that you stay with us this morning on this frequency. Uh, it might also interest you to know that we're broadcasting live from our studios right here in Victoria Island, Lagos. Uh, it's Plus TV Africa. Well, on a Top Trending, it's a very sad event that happened over the weekend and we're here to talk about it and that's because it generated a lot of reaction not necessarily but i mean it's very sad and unfortunate that this actually happened so yes yeah, south african artist costa teach uh dies on stage uh that actually you know was an unfortunate event like i, I, I rightly mentioned uh costa teach suddenly died over the weekend i saw the video over and over again uh his family actually put that out after his performance at the music festival now the footage that are circulating unfortunately we can't bring you uh, some of these clips or footage on social media uh, where he had performed costa teach fell over on the stage before being lifted and by someone beside him and then he gets up and then the other second he apparently collapsed again uh, it, it was, you know, at that moment where he was performing and then he suddenly passed out. But his family, you know, took to social media to announce his death, saying that it's with deep pain that we find ourselves having to acknowledge his passing at this time. Uh, that's what the family said on an Instagram post. And they're saying that they're thankful for the emergencies uh, or the emergency that was available. Apparently the family, uh, those who were around at the time, It was also said that uh, the family was quoted to say that they were thankful for the emergency responders and all those who were present at the last hour. Uh, we saw the video. I personally saw that video. I mean, I woke up to it on Saturday morning, uh, that video where he was performing. He collapsed the first instance and then uh, someone around him picked him up and then he moved again the second time. He went off and that was it. Now, we can't actually say if he died immediately or he died uh, when he was actually rushed, you know, to the hospital, whatever it was. But the family has put out a statement. My interest is to know that uh, Costa Teach uh, was a very prominent and galvanizing voice among South Africans. I'm a piano scene, talented rapper. I mean, yesterday I saw uh, Crayon putting out a post and, and tweet us to that effect. He was also a dancer, a songwriter, a collaborator. Great, great talent. If you see him, very energetic. I think that the world has actually lost the talent. The world has lost a lot, and it's really saddening. Now, this actually also happens shortly after uh, he was friends with the uh, Karen Forbes. Karen Forbes is AKA. Uh, remember the shooting that happened in South Africa as well? And uh, he was friends with him shortly after morning, then it's his time. But well, prior to this time, there's been several reactions from Nigeria. Kid Wire put out, you know, a video, very, very nice, brilliant video. He's, he's had a very cool environment talking about the need. He was expressing his concern over the unfortunate incident that happened us yesterday and what have you. And then in the course of that, I think he got a lot of backlash. People have been critical of him and saying it's not the time. You probably would have been sensitive. You can't constantly insinuate and put out certain messages because in 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 in, in Kid Wire's message, he he said that it was important that people pay attention to their artists and you know look after them, uh, look after their health because most times check the blood pressure, make sure they're mentally fit. You know fit in all ramification and if it has to do with reforms then you have to do that because in most cases these artists actually are on drugs and uh, they do a lot of things 
uh, just to escape all of the pressure and, and all of that that you've been faced with. But he didn't sit down with a lot of people. He uh, didn't sit down with a lot of people, especially from Nigeria. I can't talk about South Africa. And some people are saying, very popular persons like of Dotu, amongst others, are saying, hey, you could have, you know, sense uh, the mood in the room and just be very silent about it. Because it looks like... Uh, up until this moment, even this, from the statement of the family, it's not been a certain what is the cause of the debt or what actually led to the debt of, you know, uh, Costa Teach, right? And so people have actually not embraced that, saying, hey, uh, you should understand that someone has died and it's not important to push out that narrative, especially when autopsy has not been conducted. And so, yes, it's important to have an autopsy conducted. And, you know, the concerns that he raised, maybe he actually raised the concern. Uh, way too early. Probably would have made just allow it just stay off until what led to his death was actually stated or put out. An autopsy report has been given and then he can put all of that. But uh, when you talk about people collapsing, uh, what could be the reason? There's been a lot of uh, reports, certified reports from medical practitioners. It could be anything. But it's important that we take care of our health. That's, this should be the message. Our hearts and our prayers are we, with the family of uh, this amazing talent and rapper. And I think that the world would miss him, really. He, he was amazing, especially in an era where you have him a piano you know, topping the chart. You need to go check out his videos. He's great. He's fantastic. And um, piano is some sound that has come to stay. He was going to be here for a long time. He was championing that cause. Unfortunately, this happened shortly after he lost his friend, Karen Forbes, who's also known as AKA. We pray that he finds peace and rest, but most importantly for the living, the lesson is that please pay attention to your health. We can't not uh, you know, you know, say for real when it will come knocking. I mean, death. But hey, what can we do to stay alive? It's just important that you look at yourself, take care of yourself. Very important. Uh, so you stay alive. Okay? Very sad. Very unfortunate. We'll move on quickly. Now, next on the list is, we're back to Nigeria now. <laughs> we we're now South Africa talking about uh, Costa. But now, uh, following the election, it's more like a trickle down from what happened from the elections of 20. Uh, the, the February 25th, 2023 presidential elections. Now, some persons, members of the All Progressive Congress, particularly, were seen that there were women, uh, took out to the street to protest on paid funds after voting the APC. And uh, that video, which has been making the rounds, party members from a local government area of the state took to the street to make their case. And some of the members of the All Progressive Congress in Lagos State have also staged that particular protest, uh, alleging not payment of uh, election allowance. <laughs> we never knew that there was some, there's something like election allowance by party uh, leadership in the state. So... Um, you, you know that the presidential and national assembly elections were held on 25th of February. And prior to this time, there were several policies, especially the Naira uh, redesign policy, which a lot of persons said this Naira redesign policy was actually meant to curb the issue of vote buying and what have you. But, I mean, if you look at it, we know that INEC had promised several... Uh, and it made a lot of promises saying we're going to tackle this, we're going to be against vote buying, uh, we're going to work against it, we're going to ensure that we arrest those who are selling their votes and those who are buying their votes. But unfortunately, vote buying took a different dimension because from the report, even though some persons have, have been quoted to say that people saw their, this particular protest was staged, but you can't also take out the fact that there are reports from states like Ekiti where people sold their votes on credits. It's like um, it's like you walk up to a store and say, Mama, give me rice. I go give you the money tomorrow. <laughs> you understand? This is exactly what played out. And uh, it's, it's so unfortunate. Now, now, for the fact that these persons are very bold and confident to take to the street to say, hey, we haven't been paid from what we did the last year, it's the fact that they don't understand that what they have done is not right. <laughs> That's it. And so... Uh, where do we come, I mean, where do we start from, actually, in all of this? Now, it's just a long message to say, yes, we know that we had the Electoral Act of 2022. Yes, we also know that, you know, a lot of persons believed in this, uh, the introduction of the Beavers and what have you, to, you know, provide uh, a credible elections, free and fair, and what have you. But you also need to understand that people are thinking ahead. And with the issue of vote buying, 
as much as I would say it's okay to have laws in place to apprehend the rest, we haven't heard how many persons have been arrested so far for vote buying and those who are selling and, and buying because, I mean, it's not possible to have the, uh, the buyer and not have the seller as well. Uh, so we haven't pretty heard. If you have heard, it's okay. I'd like to know how many persons have been apprehended across the country as to the issue of vote buying. But you see, like I always say, poverty and corruption and vote buying, whatever it is, work hand in hand. Now, if we have to get to a point where people are not selling their vote, I think that it's very eminent, it's very important that we pay attention, you know, to the current reality of the people. A lot of people are so frustrated. A lot of people are out of op options. They have no other option. They don't even care about tomorrow. And so what they care about is now. And this is not to hold brief for them. But, you know, because you expect someone to be rational and to say, oh, the rationality is why should you sell your vote for on credit? I mean, it's, it's just a wrong business decision, especially with someone that you can't actually hold on to. You don't have an address. You don't have an office that you can hold on to. I mean, a lot of things that you can't, you know, hold on to. So what's the rationality behind selling your vote? to someone on credit and saying, I will cast my vote for you if you give me X, Y, Z. Now, there's also a poll that was made, a survey that you know, happened prior to this election, and that was in 2022. It was reported that a certain percentage of persons are willing to cast their vote or you know, you know, vote uh, on the basis of the fact that they will receive gifts and favors from you know, this other person. I mean, if, if anybody comes to me, that survey, uh, people actually give, give in to that. Oh, about 62%, if I'm not mistaken. And it's quite worrisome. And I say that if we constantly say, hey, we're putting out laws to apprehend this person and, hey, we get vote buyers and vote sellers, uh, let's even say that's anything to go by. But I'm saying that if we continue like that, there's some people who really don't care. They've gotten to a point where they don't care what happens after the next day. So what they're concerned about is today. And how do you explain rationality? How do you ex expect this person to be rational? To understand that if I cast, if I sell my vote, if I give in my vote for on credit or for 1,500, uh, what becomes of me for the next four years? They don't understand the rationality that they are selling out their future and their children and what have you. So beyond putting out laws to apprehend those who are uh, casting their votes, selling their votes, and buying votes, and whatever. And mostly those who are selling it, not those who are buying, is that we need to put the acts together. What exactly could be responsible? Root analysis. What's the cause of all of this problem? Poverty. People are very hungry. But that's not an excuse, like I always say. But I'm saying that that's it. So how do we solve the issue of people hungry, being hungry, people who are poor, and people who don't think about tomorrow? They don't care about what the outcome of tomorrow is, what they know is about today. How can we survive today? And do you blame them? It's a rhetoric question. I'm not expecting an answer. But I think we need to factor all of this. What's the level of awareness? Do they understand? Uh, do they have all the means of survival? So... It's, it's encompassing. To have the laws already and this, uh, implementation of the law is also a different thing entirely. But I'm saying, how do we address this? Addressing the issue of vote buying in our politics, in our democracy, it's not just going to be via the laws and saying we're going to arrest. Yeah, that's going to make a lot of sense if we do that, because up until this moment, I haven't seen. But up until we do that, that would also have an impact. But I'm also saying that on the other hand, we need to look at... Why are people really selling their vote and not being rational, understanding you know, the implication of casting your vote or selling your vote on credit and taking favors for how much? We also need to get to that. And as soon as we understand what is responsible for that behavior and action, then I think that we have the solution to the problem. Because if you understand what's the cause, you will be working towards addressing it. So yes, it's a call to the government. We are here implementing all of these policies. But we do we really pay attention to why people behave in a certain way and why we expect them to act rational when... If you look at the, uh, I would always make reference to the theory of needs, uh, Abraham Maslow. You can't move to a certain stage if you have not gotten to a certain stage. So you have the issue of need, people are hungry, you need to, uh, you know, satisfy a certain need before you move to another, talk about education. So the basic need is food, clothing, and shelter. And if people have not been able to meet a certain need in, within the need uh, category or the strata of needs, then how do they move to the other? And how do you even get to the issue, you know, to the point where you're talking about self-actualization. Self it's a lot. Uh, well, that's what it is. Hopefully, we get it right. Now, 
on the next on our top trending is that you have the last small officials begging Lagosians for uh, forgiveness over the years of maltreatment. So uh, this is very funny because the elections are here. Unfortunately, these elections would have probably happened yesterday. That didn't happen. It's been postponed to, you know, this weekend that we're approaching. That's the 18th of March. So yes, all things being equal, this is me saying because we can never tell if I could, you know, wake up and say the elections will move. So up until we get to the 18th, that's when we know. But the elections have been uh, postponed to the 18th of March 2023. And now you find the legal state of officials uh, and officers begging for forgiveness over years of maltreatment because they want a uh, retainership of the governor of the state. That's Songulu uh, right there. I really don't know. But you see, the reason why you have the people in place, the reason why it's a democracy is that the people have a right to say, hey, we are not, we're not having, you know, dividends of democracy and they're, they're making demands. So uh, I don't know how this will pan out, but, you know, I think that it's solely and very dependent, uh, you know, on the people to decide. But this is also a quick reminder across the statistic states of the Federation that we need to understand that governance is not just, uh, you know, having a very fanciful office and then, or fancy office and then have all of the, uh, you know, the benefits that comes with this office, being a governor, and then you have the, you know, the convoy. I mean, according to the rules uh, that are laid down and what it is, so you go about, you know, your business. That's not what it's about. If, if we look at the origin, the reason why government exists as government, not just in Nigeria, but across different parts of the world, in generality, the essence of government is that government would be responsible for managing the resources of the people on their behalf. That's the essence of government. And categorically speaking, if you look at the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended 1990, it would be the responsibility of government to ensure that lives and property, the welfare of the people, not saying, you know, categorically, when we say the welfare of the people, Welfare. Welfare is, it's welfare. It's encompassing. Uh, if you look at it, so I'm sure you want to, you know, go to the dictionary or look at the meaning of welfare on the internet. Welfare is welfare. What, what do we mean when we say welfare? So I think that for a lot of people who contest these offices, those who are governors now, those who want to be governor, it's, it feels like we're, we're losing touch with the reality, the essence that you have people in place, the essence that you have all of this working. It's that if you say you want to be, uh, you're coming out to, you know, contest for or vie for a certain book, it's that you are looking at the interests of the people, that you will protect the interests of the people, that the welfare of the people will be your concern. It's enshrined in the constitution. So how many governorship candidates, those who are also governors at this point in time, and those who are intending or those who are vying to become governors and, you know, would be contesting this election come the 18th of February, understand the basics of government. So we're just here struggling. Nigerians are struggling for basic amenity. It's really saddening. The basic amenity has become a luxury. So, I mean, <laughs> if you have power supply, it's a luxury. If you have access to security, it's becoming a luxury. It's supposed to be basic things where government should be responsible. How are you then? We're not, we just need to move away. It's so saddening. It's very unfortunate that, that the people have to go through all of this. But this is an appeal. But just as you, you wake up and say, hey, I want to, what's the motivation? What's the reason? What's the rationale behind you vying for a political position or wanting to become a governor, the president? What exactly is your intention? Do you understand the need of government? Do you understand why government exists in the first instance? Do you understand the reason why government came into place? Do you understand why the people came together and say, there's something called the law of social contract, that the people will submit their will, they will pay their taxes, they will obey the laws, and in turn, you will do X, Y, Z, provide basic amenities, protect your lives. But that's not the case every other time. And people are paying taxes. People are not seeing dividends of what they're paying taxes for. And over time, you have those who should be implementing government policies, acting irrational, acting inhumane. And that's what we see with the last small officials. So what exactly are we talking about? Now it's time for the elections, and you're coming out to say, oh, forgive us for all of the wrongdoings. Power lies in the hands of the people. It's very important that the people understand that power is in their hands, and that's exactly what has happened in 2023. But I, I, we just hope that the people you know, would decide. The people always have the power. The people have always had the power, and that's exactly what democracy is about. 
So yes, maybe we need to reorientate, we need to refigure or reconfigure the way we have been programmed over time or understanding the essence of governance. We can't continue like this and expect a different result. No, it doesn't work that way. We have police officers who are acting irrational, inhumane. Uh, those, I mean, if you look at the slogan of the police officer, I say police is your friend. But it's the Nigerian police your friend. No, you want to ask, is the LASMA police your friend? No, that might, that might not just be the, the slogan for the LASMA official, but, you know, that's the slogan. So how exactly are we protecting the people that we were meant to protect? Rather, we cause, you know, it's, it's so unfortunate. But we say that we're a nascent democracy, and gradually, I am hoping, and we're also hoping, that we get to that point where we understand the dynamics of all of this. It's so unfortunate. We hope that everybody, all hands must be on deck. This is not a question of the governor, the president, the commissioners, everybody. We have to put our hands together. We have to come together and fix this nation called Nigeria. So yes, we, we, we can't continue. You, you bit the traffic lights. You don't respect. You have no rule for laws. You, I mean, and you who is supposed to enforce the law, you're acting indiscriminately. Even the animals sometimes act coordinated. And, and that's not it. So yes, let's do better. That's, you know, the watchword this morning on a Top Trending. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll time for us to go through um, the front pages of the National Daily. So we call it Off the Press. Please stay with us. Good morning. <laughs>